All right, I just uh, started recording. Um, so my name is Arun. I work for Yahoo. Uh, I've been at Yahoo for more than uh, what four years now. Um, I um, I also contribute to Federal Project and. Um, not that active anymore, but then I still uh, send bug reports to these people because I uh, mostly work on installers these days uh, at Yahoo. And I also work on the OpenStack team now. So uh, I do a little bit of contributions to OpenStack project as well. Uh, so this talk uh, is about um, how to customize you know, uh, Anaconda, like add your own custom patches and, uh, and how to rebuild Anaconda uh, for Fedora. Um, I have done a couple of lot of patches for Anaconda because uh, one thing is like, um, okay, it is challenging to work on Anaconda because the first thing you search on on the internet for Anaconda you get is this one. Uh, so it's really a distracting experience. Like you keep clicking this and then now it never goes away. <laughs> I don't know whether the Anaconda does here experience the same thing, uh, but uh, yeah, it happens. So why uh, we should uh, modify Anaconda? I mean, a lot of people never even use Anaconda these days. They just use FedUp to upgrade uh, their software and distribution. Um, so why? So if you're building remixes, so you might want to replace the name of the installer with your own branding and own name. And if you're adding new packages to Anaconda runtime, so why we need to do this? So at Yahoo, so we have like several hundred, hundreds and thousands of servers, and most of the hard, you know, hardware comes with like four hard drives, and most of them comes with more than four hard drives. Like you have multiple hard drives. The moment uh, you have multiple hard drives, it comes with a RAID controller card, and the RAID controller kind of uh, comes with its own RAID utilities. So the person, the property, the uh, the project that wants to deploy to this hardware. They want the uh, hardware right configured. So only way to do with Anaconda right now is to either include that uh, hardware utility in the Anaconda runtime so that they can run their whatever pre-scripts, you know, uh, and configure the hardware right in the way they want, and then install the operating system. So this is one of the things that we we can or you can include your custom utility in the Anaconda runtime where you want to do something in your post or pre-scripts. Um, so I, I don't know why uh, I, these people can answer. Uh, Anaconda never added hardware rate support. I mean, uh <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, so so yeah, maybe I should buy a bug. <laughs> yeah. So hardware rate uh, is really important because uh, for us, a person who works in a big environment, because on a, on a day, we have like a normal day, it's uh, 200 machines coming up and going down. Uh, on a, like a really active day, you have like thousands of machines <laughs> coming up and reimaging. So like new soft, new, you know, product launch or something. So you have thousand machines. So every thousand machines, uh, some person in the data center goes there, manually writes a ticket, and then somebody goes there and manually configures this RAID with a special RAM disk. and uh, it's I mean, it's really time consuming. Like a week, you know, week in advance, the particular person has to say, okay, I want RAID uh, 5 on this, you know, this, and then they go there and manually modif modify it. This is like a really, really bad problem for us because it, it makes like you need to prepare it ahead. You know, you cannot just go and deploy software without configuring RAID. Um, so we needed some kind of, you know, they can, the property themselves, Go and you know modify the kickstart file uh, and do that. If there is a if there is a way to do instead of script running script, if there is a way for in Anaconda to do RAID configurations with like okay hardware RAID put this on RAID five and ten, uh, that'd be very useful for a company like Yahoo where we have several mach thousand machines. There is one. Uh, another one is adding new features to Anaconda. So you might want to add so company like Yahoo. Uh, sometimes we always submit, try to point out bugs and submit to Red Hat and folks to Anaconda team. But 
sometimes it takes a loop you know it takes it a while to for the bug fix to come in but we cannot wait around for that so we we will time to time add patches to anaconda and <coughs> uh, you know push it out uh, so this is where you add your own uh, patches so that you, you'll be like ahead of uh, what comes from Red Hat or what comes from Fedora. Um, another thing, um, so one more thing, this is related a little bit Yahoo. Uh, we noticed is that um, when you are com com you know building 1800 machines, most of the machines, you know, like the failure rate is like, the failure to install is like, let's say 1%, still it's like, what, 1% of 1800 is uh, 10 to 20 machines. Um, 18 machines, yeah. <laughs> uh, 18 machines, thanks. Um, so, the person who's deploying, the operator who's deploying, has to actually go into console of this machine. We do not use graphical user interface, it's all text modes. So, the person has to go into the graphical user interface, look into the console, into the tool server, and figure out what the heck happened there, whether it's a bad hard drive or something blown up. It's really, again, a time consuming sh job. So we are looking for something like, okay, the Anaconda, when it starts installing, so it starts a service where you query from a centralized dashboard where say, okay, why it failed? Uh, what's the status of the current installation? And uh, some kind of a status API. Um, so there are other installers that do that right now. I mean, we are trying to add this feature to Anaconda, uh, but we might, uh, we might, I know it's a, it's a tricky thing. We might implement it, or we might use the other installer. So there is an installer called IPA, which does that. So they have an API where it keeps telling, okay, what what's happening in the machine? Whether it's you know formatting files, file system, or a particular hard drive went down. Uh, so that kind of status messages will be very useful for a data center use cases. Uh, in case of Anaconda, I don't know what's he thinking. I think it's the wrong model, but... Uh, <laughs> what do you think is the right model? Did you see the stuff that, uh, that Nebula did before they imploded on their, their private cloud stuff? So the way it works is you, you got one, like you you got a rack system, right? It's a brand new rack. Mm -hmm. You deploy one system manually a particular way, mm -hmm. and it's a Pixie server, basically, and you tell your hardware vendor to give me everything configured to Pixie for the first time. Every time you rack something, it, it sees it pixie booting, immediately sends an agent up to run a machine. The agent runs IPMI tools, sets the IPMI password. Okay. And now everything happens from the, the top on IPMI over the network. Okay. And so it can ask what's the hardware status, what's this status, what's that status, and it's running <laughs> on the service process. Okay. So, <coughs> so basically, they have a custom agent running. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it reconfigures the loader to do whatever and sort of uh, install image or whatever immediately after that. Okay. Um, which is a step above where Anaconda is involved, right? Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so something like installation logs. Yeah. Like, how do we get it's that? Completely, it's a completely automated process that the rat machine and five minutes later it's running what you want. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, <laughs> these are some of the things that I mean we we can discuss about it, like yeah. what how we can do something like a monitoring of yeah. the of installation status of uh, all these things. Okay, so what are the tools people use normally to uh, uh, build Anaconda? So there are three tools uh, we're going to use. We're going to use Mock. So Mock is uh, you know is is for RPM building. Um, so if you want to build on a, if you have a federal machine, if you want to build for L6, you will need a mock shiroot to build Anaconda on that. So we'll set up mock shiroot and run Anaconda in there. And then in case of uh, L6, you used to use this tool called build install. You might know a lot about it. Uh, it's a shell script. Oh gosh. Uh, so uh, you have to modify the shell script if you want to add another package. Uh, anything to this runtime installer, you have to modify shell scripts. So it's a totally built install. We'll we'll look in briefly about it. We'll mostly fo focus on something like Lorex. Uh, so uh, what is that? So much better. Yes, uh, <laughs> Lorex is nicer uh, version of build install. Uh, it's I think uh, Rel six uses build install. Rel seven uses Lorex. Mm -hmm. um, and Fedora, if you today build, want to build images for Fedora, you will be using uh, Lorex. 
Okay, so this is important. So um, I'll be like switching between terminals. It, it's not a demo. I already built a uh, stage to SquashFS outside because with this internet, I cannot build anything right now. Um, so, so this is like a mock configuration file. So we need additional settings. I mean, correct me if you. If, uh, I wonder if they went online. I don't. I, I, I still don't understand why there's another problem. Okay. Or sit down. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I use mock attributes. Yeah. So basically, uh, we need to enable bind bind mounts uh, to do scratch of images, and uh, and also some people what they do is they uh, so mock every time cleans the chiru. So they what they do is they uh, bind mount their anaconda directories into the mock chiru so that it doesn't clean anything. Uh, so. If you look at my, I have a custom mock configuration file. Um, I have you can see mock uh, flock. Yeah, so I created a new uh, mock configuration file flock twenty one. Uh, so it calls Yahoo Compose. <laughs> uh, some Yahoo stuff here, and the important point point, point is the line ten to uh, ten to thirteen. So we have uh, bind mount enabled, and we just bind mount, bind mount dev and pts and shim. So we we do not use the existing mock file, so we create a, another one so that um, when when you are building RPMs, you don't really need all this. Uh, we also do some Jenkins magic for you know get an environment variable and pass it in. This is something related to Yahoo. <laughs> all right, so. So what are the installer components? So once you build a build an installer, there are three components in an installer, like as usual the pixie kernel that you want, need, and one of the one, one is called RAM disk. So RAM disk Anaconda is a big installer. It's a two-stage installer. So uh, RAM disk has uh, your breaker stuff that actually prepares uh, the stage two, downloads the stage two, downloads the kickstart file stage one, mm -hmm. and there is a stage two. Stage two is a splash of this image. Um, uh, that is in the install tree. So it's a three stage installer. So we'll be building on these three. Uh, we'll not be building, but I'll be showing I have logs of the builds, like what happens. OK, build install. So what's the problem? It's a shell script. Let's look at build install. The problem is not that it's a shell script. What is that? The problem is not that it's a shell script. The problem is that it's a really bad shell script. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, let's look at it, like, see how bad it is. Uh, and I kind of, I had to work on this to fix. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. I wrote a lot of it. <laughs> so, I'm oh, sorry. Like Mostly in Germany, I think. Always German. Uh oh. You did them less. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, Control C and Escape Control W, Escape Control Q. Now, Vim or less, but not both. Oh, reset. What is that? What's the command reset to? Oh, yeah. Ah, demos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to go into 13, so this is this is the one comes with uh, rel, uh, centos, scripts. Oh, it's hard. Build install. Okay, so this is uh, build install um, shell script. Actually, the main um, build install stuff is everything is in something else. Another shell script, which is called up inst instrument. So if you have to add a new package, update, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you have to modify this shell script. So up instrument. Uh, yeah. It's hard. Okay, I'm gonna sit here. <laughs> yeah. So this is the so that sh shell script calls this one, and it, it, it's almost the same as. So if you look at this packages, these are the <laughs> list of packages. That's <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so if you want to add a new package into your Anaconda runtime, you edit this thing and add this and make sure that uh, you use the right build install to build this because if, I mean the build install, there is a build install outside and there is a build install part of Anaconda. So these are the set of packages that gets installed in the squash of the images and then this is the place where you edit it. All right, so yeah, that is the reason they created, I mean, I don't know what's the exact reason. Is, is this the reason, like, is the, every time you had to, guys have to do, do a release, you had to modify this, is that, what's yeah. the reason for Lorex? The reason for Lorex is that uh, if you keep on reading uh, uh, build and stuff rather than that, there's a, ter there's a bunch of terrifying, terrifying code, actually it might be in a, in, in a P in group, that does things like try to figure out which LDSOs you need to have by guessing and, and, and running through uh, uh, LVD with the thing to make it through. Uh, uh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> then it does a depth sorting of it, a, a depth solving thing and tries to sort them to try to make sure we got all the right things in it, but have to manually break up the 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 requirements loops. Uh, no. Uh, no. It's bad. It's okay. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think it's it's written by Bill Woods, right? Lorex. Um, him and uh, Ryan. Oh, okay. So, so it's called that. <laughs> it's, it's called the tree builder. So basically, it is used to generate the like your DVD tree entire. Tree. What you see in a federal DVD, this is what uh, the use to generate it. Uh, so why build install is hard to customize? That's what I heard from the IRC in places. Mm -hmm. And Lorex is Python based, so and it uses a system called template system. So everything is a template. So they have a template file. I think it's the what what's the template system? Is it Jin not Jinja? It's something else. Um, um, I don't know the name. Yeah, it's just in here. Okay. Is it uses a template system where it's the templates are customizable, and if you want to add a build step, you can add your own custom template. So it's so it's more modular uh, if you want to customize it. Um, yeah. So let's look at the templates. Yeah. Use the share Lorax. Mako. Mako, yeah. So, so if you look at the, these PMPL files, these are the um, templates that are used to customize the whole image. Um, so by default, it's based on the architecture. I think it's first run x86 template. Um, let's look at what it is. What's there? So all the stuff related to x86 stuff, the bootloader, and the runtime image, the squash of this image is created by, you can go through the code layer, um, runtime, install, post install, cleanup. So, so everything is a template. So if you look at here, this the instead of like having a uh, bash variable, you, you have like a, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of easy to, uh, you know, add, modify things here. So. It, so if you want to add a new package to Anaconda Runtime, this, this is the place you add. Or you add your own template and pass it on uh, here. All right. I'm going to, I think this talk is going to be like very, we'll complete, you know, you know soon. Uh, okay. So the patches. So what patches do we add? So I have a small patch, like a welcome patch. You know, you change. Yeah, you know, I think most of the distributions, if you want to do a remix, they do this. Like they modify the, um, modify the, you know, trademarks and all the names and stuff. So let's look at this patch. Uh, it's called the welcome patch. I actually applied this patch on a machine. Um, So what what this patch is patch does is like it just says um, welcome to Flock 15 uh, from welcome to Fedora and I think it this this I, I I don't I don't know I didn't get it working I think it only works on a live in, live image yeah 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 <laughs> yeah but 
but you, uh, when you're building with lorex you can say the product name so it changes the product name we'll at least see that uh, in the demo and uh, so so these are the uh, two patches i added i have another patch it's like a bigger patch i can show you so this patch is actually running running in production at yahoo so april 2015 ah okay um so this is a patch that adds uh, top payload support for a rel6 installer so the concept is that we have a lot of uh, we don't install into the lock units we have if you, if you are if you came to my talk like last year at uh, Prague, so we do a lot of tarballs. So tarballs are easy to like transfer and export than individual RPMs. It just reduces time. So uh, we currently have support thanks to our kind of team. They have added support for tarballs until 7.1 onwards, right? Yeah, 7.1. It landed on sound. Um, so even before they added, we we've been running that patch. Now rel six, we need we need a rel. We have a, had a custom installer, and uh, we wanted to move away from it, uh, try different things. So Anaconda is one of them. So we added a patch to Anaconda uh, to add su support for pay top pillar. How it works is that you uh, you specify in, during the installation, you specify in the kernel ca command line top pillar equals the URL of the top ball. Uh, it automatically passes this top payload argument and downloads this top ball, creates partitions and extracts them onto the disk. So it's very simple, like a, and but it kind of uh, we have to hack into the installer to divert to do this. Otherwise, the installer will do something else. Um, so I think this is some formatting change I did. I don't know why. Okay, I shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah. Oh, old codes are uh, like uh, the, the old Anaconda code is really a little bit hard <laughs> to read. Uh, the new code is really good. I mean, uh, from looking at the old code and the new code, uh, it's well organized and obviously well organized. The new code is well organized. But I, I mean, working on OpenStack, you see like things like talks and unit tests, but I don't see anything, anything here so far. Do you guys have plans to add it? Okay. There's no stuff for like three months on board. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll talk to you guys. <laughs> I mean, there's that, and we also have a set of Yeah, we have a collection of Kickstarter that we okay. run what we do. Okay. So I mean, I guess those are acceptance tests for the whole thing rather than unit tests, but. Yeah, so this <laughs> this after applying patch, uh, what we what I do is normally uh, create a ISO image and then boot the whole thing in a VM as like a test. Uh, if the VM works, we just push it to uh, like a centralized repository and then it goes to production automatically. Uh, it's like a small dumb test, but um, I think uh, the current team does more tests where they actually deploy the installer, use the installer on a bare metal machine, and do the tests. Um, so. So this flag actually is, uh, comes from, uh, is said by the code that process the uh, kickstart files, sorry, the kernel command lines. So if, if it finds the top payload flag, um, it goes to, uh, it calls the top, ba top payload backend. It's both for Fedora and Rel. And if you look at the top payload backend, um, so it just, what it does is it finds out the size of the, uh, tarball, see if it can write it to the temporary file system on the disk and it downloads it and uh, uses a progress bar, that's a progress bar. It's almost like equivalent to the one that you guys have in live image payload uh, except it's for L6 which is like an older installer and it extracts the whole thing um, onto the disk. So this part is a little important. We use no ACLs because there's a bug in tar if you <laughs> use ACLs, it sets the default ACLs on all files. <sighs> so we got a this we had to disable it because it's kind of a security vulnerability to set the default ACLs on all the files. Um, so we extract the um, actual uh, files, the tarball, onto the disk using this command. And then are you are you triggering a relabel or what? Um, no. Okay. Should be, I don't know. So we don't use, we, we do not have AC Linux enabled oh, on any way. Yeah. yeah, so but the AC Linux flag is just that, you know, if in the future if we decide to do that, uh, we should probably trigger a relabel. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, fix the power button. 
<laughs> so there was two bucks open on uh, against Red Hat. So it's fixed on Fedora. Uh, that patch is okay. not yeah. The patch was not never backport backported to Tar. So to I think it's tended to uh, I think it will be released with 7.2 and 6.8. I don't know why 6.7. Um, but um, let's see. Yep. So we do some sync and then uh, we you know this this all run, runs in a thread and this is the patch. So this patch is applied against Rel6. Um, okay, let's go here. Patch 2. Okay, this is the command actually uh, to build the um, stage 2 scratch up image. Um, so what it does is this is the product. With I have a make file that does this. I mean, I, I have published everything on in my Fedora people page. It's a CGR and I'll give you the link later. You can go look at the patch and all the make file if you want to do it yourself. Uh, so lorex command this is the product name. So this is your new distro uh, and this is your uh, version of your distro and the release. So this yes means this is the repo. So it normally it points at the upstream repo which is Fedora. And this repo is probably the updates repo and the final one is the Anaconda mirror. So you have built Anaconda. So I, what I just did is like I applied the patch to Anaconda, I built Anaconda. Now the Anaconda version has to be a little bit like you, you bump the release so that it's a little bit higher than the one that's available at you know the Red Hat mirrors or Fedora mirrors. Yes, to get it in the image, and uh, uh, you you point your um, uh, point this to the Anaconda mirror, and then finally you say is final. This is a little bit important, otherwise Anaconda will keep telling people that oh you're running a pre-released version. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And another important thing, uh, another another thing I noticed is, uh, uh, if you're building and building this on a rel six, but you're building for a rel seven on a Chirut, sometimes this um, I think I think it's the Fedora image. I think if you're bu building Fedora on a rel six machine, what happens is that um, the Mac boot stuff. So basically, the yeah. HFS yeah. Uh, they don't have HFS drivers. So you yeah. probably need to say no Mac boot yeah. uh, in the lower command. Like somebody had a patch recently, very I think like a month two months ago. Added a patch to disable no MacBook. It wasn't there, so I used to do just set down. The <laughs> yeah. I mean, we certainly never built it on the side of each other. I would add it between the two and added so that it could be a Fedora feature before all seven happened. Yes. But never added for all six because like it's not a. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I I totally understand where it comes. But when you're like working in working in an enterprise company, like you yeah. you have like real six popular thing right now at Relson, we are just ad adapting into Relson. Um, so no no MacBook option is there, that's for people. So it writes all the uh, things into tree. So let's look at the make file, that's the like uh, important thing. So how I build the whole thing. I, I'm not going to run the make file, I just ran before this talk mm -hmm. and I have the logs and the, the image. I'll show you that because if you run it, it will take another hour <laughs> with this internet right. connection. Um, so. I have a make file named makefile.lorex. So, if you, uh, as you can see, the all the files are like uh, it's a plot and 21 and exactly 64. And uh, so I have a command called run a uh, small makefile variable called run mock. So it uses it's going to use the plot 21 x 64 compose uh, mock configuration file. Uh, so which has the bind mounts enabled and everything. And uh, so I have a one. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to use the updates mirror. So I have a um, mirror start M80. I think M80 is closer here. So just a little faster. So I have a, a Fedora mirror, which is like a 21 mirror here, base mirror, no updates. My Anaconda, I have a web server running, and I copied all my Anaconda to, I mean, I, I don't know, I tried to use the file flag, I, I, it just didn't work, file colon colon temp. So you didn't run that in mock? What is that? You have, you have to find mock the file in your mock? Uh, I didn't, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I forgot, sorry. <laughs> now I, I, I now know why it didn't work, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so this Anaconda mirror, um, so right now, so to work around that, I just started my HTTPD. So you can see um, I have raw www, HTML, 
my panda. So it, so it just has uh, all the Anaconda RPMs with the bump, release bumps, dash two, uh, which has the patch in it, and the report data. Uh, yeah, so it will retrieve from that. So I also, I'm also gonna test this image, so once I have the image, I'll just start a VM and see if it works, you know, it's like a smoke test, see uh, everything works. Okay, you can ignore that. So the main main thing is the mock tree. So I should have run like a uh, dash dash scrub all. I normally scrub everything and hit the mock again. But with this internet connection, I cannot afford to scrub anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what I do is I uh, install uh, Lorex into the mock chirot first. And then I copy my current working directory, which has the actual this main file and the uh, actual code to build the whole thing into the into the uh, mock zero and then here I can do you know do the CD into the work directory and then I call make file dot lorex to I don't know why but so I call them lorex clean make uh, and I don't know what's there. I think it's probably uh, Lorex uh, tree. It's probably clean and tree. So it's probably first clean, cleans the whole thing, and then again uh, it calls the tree. It builds uh, the Lorex. It uses the Lorex command to actually build the thing into the chirur, and then um, finally uh, this is the clean. So it just cleans, just deletes all the unwanted stuff. And uh, this is where the whole thing runs. <coughs> oh, this is important in case of Fedora. So. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. On the recent edition. I think. Okay. <laughs> so this is uh, so if you don't exclude this, um, you know, product, yeah. this package is it will you it will you you will run into Debsol when you are creating the runtime image. Um, so the product of this is right now stored here. So we have EFI images, ISO Linux, and LiveOS. The LiveOS has the squash of his image, which is a stage two. And uh, I think EFI. No, no, no that kind of being the thing that goes in the different. So that I think ISO Linux has the kernel and the RAM disk. Um, so, so this is basically, uh, and then I think images, images has the boot dot ISO. Yeah. Boot ISO and the the things that become the alpha images on boot ISO. Yes. So this is basically like a DVD tree. Uh, the whole thing is created. Let's let's test this. So this is created. Um, I have the build lock here. Um, I don't know. I don't think I have to show this, but um, so I'm gonna just uh, do a make. Maybe I should go here. So what I did is I built the ISO and uh, I patched the whole thing up, and I I'm gonna. I'm going to run from here. Okay. Okay, I have the, I'm just going to do a quick test using VM. So I just created a boot.iso. I'm injecting a kickstart file in there. It's probably not going to work, but it will show you like the actual boot and say flock 21. Um, I haven't replaced the, you know, the mm -hmm. logos and all this, but just want to show you like flock twenty one. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Just gonna go show the actual graphical UI. So it'll show flock twenty one there as well. Okay. So. I don't know. A lot of people may not have, you know, don't need to really like do all this because 
uh, an account that just works most of the time. Yeah. But uh, if you are working in a company, big company, enterprise, which want to use wants to use Anaconda. If you want to reduce dependence on uh, Red Hat's, you know, release model, they take a little bit of extra time. You want to fix it fast because internet companies are like fast. Mm -hmm. uh, things move fast, um, so uh, we uh, we have to do this. Okay, any questions? Uh, so if you're just adding an RPM, would a driver disk uh, or driver update just look that? Uh, what is that? Uh, instead of building a whole uh, new image with your driver update, could you just uh, use the stock image with the driver update? Update start image? Uh, you mean? Yeah. Well, that, that's a good question. Certainly, have the ability to add updated images to the image that's just going to jump on top of it. Um, oh, with the driver updates, yeah. yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So maybe uh, you guys can send me the instructions on how to do that. Um, okay. Yeah. Documentations on this. I think most of the things I brought it from BCL. BCL is here. No. No. So he he has a tricky page. His user page has some instructions. And uh, if you guys can send me stuff on like uh, how to do the driver image. Yeah, it's a little hard. <laughs> it's hard to find. You have to ask. Uh, probably, you know, this kind of starts. It's like an initial thing. If anyone wants to get started with uh, playing with Anaconda, want to c contribute to the Anaconda project, uh, it'll be a good point to start. Whatever you need, you know, locally and do make updates and it'll build up updates that are Image, okay. Cool. Maybe you guys are here, right? Maybe I can talk to you guys about it. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll catch him. He's not hiding. <laughs> All right. I'm going to stop the presentation and thank you everyone for coming. And uh, despite the fes uh, FESCO. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, FESCO. Yep. <laughs>